Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python, Lesson 10. Today we're going to talk about cryptography, or secret codes. There are lots of different ways to encode secret messages. The one we're going to talk about today is a very famous one called the Caesar cipher. The Caesar cipher works like this. You take the letters of the alphabet, and then you shift those letters over a certain number of spaces. The most famous, or the most common, being 13 spaces. And you see now L lines up with Y, G lines up with T, and so on. And then you take your, your message, which is called the clear text, and by looking up each letter and what the new letter is, you have your secret code, or your cipher text. So let's look at how we would start making the code for this. Well, we know we're going to want to ask the person to input a clear text. Once they've put that in, now we have something that we could encrypt. Now, how do we do that? Well, whatever they type in is going to be a string like this, right? So we want to do a loop where we go through each letter one at a time, look up what the new letter is, and save that in a new variable, which we could call ciphertext. So since this is something we might want to do over and over again, it makes sense to define the encrypting as a function. We can say def encrypt, right? And what you pass to the encrypt function, the, the argument, will be the clear text. Okay. And our ciphertext is just going to start out as nothing. Right? We haven't done anything yet. Now we want to do that loop through the clear text. So we can say for each character, and I'll just use car here for short for character, for character in clear text. Okay, so what do we want to do with each letter? So let's pretend that our secret message, and I'll just write this up here as a comment so we have something to look at. Let's pretend that our secret message is this. So when we start our loop, the first character is going to be S. So we need to figure out what S is going to become. Well, over here on our chart, we see S should become F. Well, how do we get there? Well, if the shift is 13, we know we need to count 13 spaces from S. We need to add 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. See, so S becomes F. So we need a copy of the alphabet that we can look at and count. So let's make a variable with all the letters of the alphabet in it. We'll call it alpha for short. And this will just be N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. There we go. So that's all the letters of the alphabet. So now, if the character that we're on is S, we just need to find where S is in this string and add 13 of, to it, right? And if we get go off the end, we need to go back around to the start. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, so the positions of each of these will be from 0 to 25. So when we count, we count up to 25. If we get to 26, we need to go back to 0. But we have two other problems we need to consider. What if the secret message has capital letters in it? Right, the letter capital T never appears in here. So we have two choices. We could make a whole nother list of all the capital letters, and we could count those separately. Or we can just use a handy little function that Python has, where we take the clear text after the person types it in, and we convert it to lowercase. So the dot lower function can be added to any string, and it will take all the characters in the string and just convert them to lowercase. Okay. Our other problem is, what if they have characters that are not in the alphabet? So 
That's so cool. What do we do with this apostrophe? Well, typically, in simple examples like this, you ignore punctuation or numbers. We're, we're going to ignore any characters in the message that are not actually part of the alphabet. So that means as we're going through the characters, the first thing we need to check is just to see, is the character in the alphabet? So is it one of these, right? If it is, then we'll encrypt it. But if it isn't, we'll just ignore it and add it to the ciphertext. So we'll just say ciphertext plus equals character, right? So when it's a apostrophe, it's not in the alphabet, so we'll just add it to the ciphertext without changing it to anything else. So now we need to figure out what is this, what is this, how do we get this S to turn into the right character? Well, first we need to find where is the S in the alphabet. Well, there's another handy string function called find. If we say alpha.find, the way this works is it says, whatever character this is, find it in alpha. So it will go through alpha and it'll find where the S is and it'll give us back the position, which for the S happens to be 18. So that's where the S is, but we want to find where the new, we want to find the new position of the new letter we want. So let's make a variable here called new pause and we'll save that in there. So we want to take where the S is and add 13 to it. Okay, so that's going to work fine if our position, if our starting character is over on the lower half of the alphabet, because when we add 13 to it, we'll end up over here somewhere. But Problem is with our S, we're taking 18 and we're adding 13, which gives us 31. And obviously there's no character 31. We want to wrap around again. So what we really want to do is take that 31 and subtract uh, 26 from it. And that gives us 5, which is where we want to be. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the F. So we could write some code that says if the new pause is greater than 26, then subtract 26 from the new pause. But there's an easier way if we use that remainder operator that we talked about early on in the course. And what we want to do is divide by 26 and take the remainder, what's left over. Let's try it out and see how that works. If we have a number that's less than 26 and we say, what's the remainder? Well, 26 doesn't go into it at all, so the whole thing is left over. And so that's fine. If we have a small number, this won't change it any. But if we have a bigger number than 26 and we divide by 26, then it goes into there once and then there's some left over. Well, there's five left over. And that gives us the F we want. So now we have the correct new pause for our new character that we need for our ciphertext. So let's add that letter to our ciphertext. So now ciphertext is just going to have added to it alpha index new pause, right? So in the case of the S, we got five. So alpha number five gets added to ciphertext, which is the F. And then so on. And then we're done with our loop. We'll go around again. We'll do the E. We'll go around again. We'll do the C. And we should be done. So now when we finish going through each character in the clear text, our ciphertext should now be complete. So at the end of our loop, after the for loop completes, we can return the ciphertext. Okay, our encrypt function is now complete. It does everything it needs to do. It takes the clear text, goes through character by character, figures out where the new position is if it's in the alphabet. If it's not in the alphabet, it ignores it. And then when it's done, it gives you back the ciphertext. So down here, we should be able to say print encrypt clear text. So we'll type in the clear text, and then we'll print out the ciphertext. So we'll just save this as Caesar. And we'll give it a run and see what happens. All right, let's try secret message first. 
since we know what that should come out as. Okay, so there's our encrypted text. Is that the same as our example? It is. Now we can try it with anything else we care to try. Let's try it with something that has uh, non-alphabetical characters in it. So if we say that's so cool, exclamation point. So it should, it should convert the T to a lowercase. It should ignore the apostrophe. It should ignore the exclamation point. So that's our Caesar cipher program. Now what's cool about the Caesar cipher, since we're using 13 as our shift, uh, 13 is exactly halfway through the alphabet. So subtracting 13 and adding 13 is actually the same thing. So if you run your program, if we run the program and we paste in the encrypted text, we'll actually get back the clear text. Now that only works if the shift is 13. You're welcome to change this 13 to any other number you want, but it won't work in reverse anymore. If you do that, then you're going to need to make a function called decrypt that does the exact same process, goes through character by character, but each time it subtracts the shift instead of adding it. And then you could use whichever function you wanted, encrypt function to encrypt things, decrypt function to decrypt things. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to try out. So that's the end of this lesson. Next time, we'll start talking about creating computer graphics. Thanks for watching.